Hi, I'm Amy Chalmers. I'm the art curator here at the State Museum, and welcome to another one of our Art Week videos. Today we'll be talking to Craig Crawford, who is a conservator. Um, his company is called Crawford Conservation, and it's just outside of Columbia, South Carolina. A conservator, that's a good question. A conservator has, um, wears lots of hats, really, in a lot of ways. I mean, there are, the field is very broken up between different specialties. So there's uh, conservators that, that, that work on paintings, one that work on, the ones that work on paper objects, works of art on paper, ones that work on photographs and 3D objects like sculptures and, and stuff an archaeologist might dig up you know, in a dig. And then there's conservation scientists, people that are, you know, researching material, artist materials, researching, you know, how to, how to come up with more stable materials. Conservators today like to use stable, reversible materials. Um, so that's something that, that a conservation scientist would be involved in developing and, and studying, you know, pigments and what artists used. And so then there's people that actually work on paintings, you know, that they used to be called bench conservators, which is sort of what I am. They actually work on the objects, whether it's photos, paper, or paintings. And then there are other conservators that are, you know, more administrative, uh, more on the, you know, the science end of, you know, the, the research end of things too. So, you know, it's very varied to what a conservator is. But my, my you know, what I do is I, I'm really what would be called a bench conservator, I guess, or, you know, someone that works directly on the object. The primary way that, that people are, are getting into the field these days are through going to undergraduate, going to get a, you know, a four-year degree in, in something like studio art or art history or chemistry. And then after that, um, continuing with graduate school in, in conservation. And there are a few graduate concert school programs in the country. And at that, at those schools, you do specialize then and determine, you know, whether you're going to be a paper conservator or a painting conservator or a photo conservator, objects conservator. So the, it, it still, still some conservators come up through apprenticeship method, you know, means where you study with a, you know, a conservator for, you know, at least five or six years as in an apprenticeship situation. Um, that's, that's less and less these days, although you do see it, and you do see it in institutions where, you know, someone that has been, been working as a technician in a conservation lab for a while slowly moves up and you know, fills a slot as a conservator. So you still see that. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a definitely a long journey because, you know, job, job, there's not tons of jobs, but there, there are opportunities. And so oftentimes once you get out of graduate school, um, you know, you may be on internships and fellowships and stuff for a while working you know, doing exciting things, maybe working in Europe on some project or in the Middle East on some project or, you know, for eight months to a year and then you have to find a new project till, you know, a job, more full-time job comes up. It's, it's great if you like to travel and uh, experience the world. The two main ones would be um, an interest in problem solving, someone that likes to solve problems and kind of th think through problems and steps on how to solve something so you know you 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 know think I mean I'm thinking all the time about okay I need to I need to get this painting face down on the hot table or you know I need to move it but it's big and it's fragile how do I you know how do I do that and what's the next step after that and what's the next step so I'm always thinking about you know those steps and how to refine them and how I can change it or make adjustments just to eliminate risk and you know and to eliminate anxiety so you can be relaxed and, and know what you're, you know, be in control of what you're doing. So I think problem solving is a big, a big part of it. I think also um, being able to sit and do the same thing over and over for hours, you know, days and days and days and days and days. You know, some, some people can sit and just pick at something for indefinitely and you need to have that kind of personality. You can't be someone that's got to, you know, jump, jump around and, and have a lot of things going on and you have to be someone that can just sit and, uh, focus and, and work, you know, on the same, doing the same thing with a scalpel all day long, you know. Some people have amazing, art, you know, talents and are great, you know, students, you know, with incredible backgrounds and 
and chemistry and physics and art history, but they just can't do that. <laughs> you know, as a bench conservator, someone that's actually working on the objects, you would need to be able to do that for sure. Painting conservation, or you know, especially painting conservation, but it can look so like tremendous, like tremendous change. It almost seems like magic, but it's not. It's just like lots of time just you know doing this repetitive thing over and over until you you know and and i think that you know sometimes people are drawn to the field because they see it that magic in it but the reality is that it's just time consuming detail oriented work you know i think that i, I think what i enjoy is working for the artist because i feel like that's really who i'm working for is they're just you know they, they created this work of art and and it's been through a lot it's been like disrespected by repainting and materials have yellowed and you know time has just taken a toll and I think what I enjoy most is trying to to honor the artist and get it back to as close as we can to what they intended and so I always have thought that that's who I really work for in essence because all all clients are, are going to be outlived by their paintings you know so their paintings are just you know they're just owners are just stewards of it really so I try to think of it that way I think that's what I enjoy most of it. And I really enjoy ones that are really challenging to, to bring back in that sense. Finishing is the challenge because, because you know, in the end, you know, let's say you have a, a tear that's very disfiguring. You're trying to get it to, to really disappear. It never feels like it's perfect. And I think that's the, the biggest challenge is, is, is accepting some some of the imperfections because you know that it is on the other hand you know it is an old painting it's been through a lot and and so i think the biggest challenge for me really is is accepting it when it's um that it's it's, it's done it's done it's done enough it's done well enough one that was recently was working on um, thomas sully's copy of, of george washington's lansdowne portrait for the north carolina uh, capital it was a full-length portrait of George Washington, and that was very exciting. And I got to spend a lot of time working with it in the, you know, in the studio. It was during the pandemic, you know, the beginning of the pandemic. And, but also working at the Capitol in D.C. Um, on the frescoes and the Bermini corridors. I don't know, it was just, it was just amazing. Amazing project to be involved in and to see how, you know, the workings of the Capitol are and see senators in the hallway. And, and the, the work is just beautiful beautiful painting and what we were doing was removing um i was i was hired by another conservator so I was, what we were doing was um removing you know years and years of repainting to get back to these beautiful frescoes underneath and so it was a lot of that you know adventure you know like wow look at this you know what's under here and and uh, so you know every day you leave the day you know you leave the end of the day just feeling really good and and charged so that was great that was a great project Thank you so much for watching this Art Week video, and if you liked it, be sure to tune in for more, and of course, like, subscribe, comment, share, um, and we will see you in the next one.